we gather here this morning in the sight of a sovereign God whom the Bible describes as being holy, holy, holy. And we gather here in the sight of these assembled witnesses to join together this man and this woman in the holy covenant of marriage. Marriage is not the invention of man. It was ordained and established by God himself at the very beginning when he created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. The purpose of marriage falls within the purpose and plan of God. Wesley and Natalie, your marriage is to honor God because it was created by God for the glory of God. This moment of change has been ordained and designed by God. Genesis chapter 2, verses 18 to 24 says this, Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make a helper fit for him. And out of the ground the Lord had formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all the livestock and to the birds of the heavens and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper suitable for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man. And while he slept, he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then he said, this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female, and said, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh? They are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man separate. Wesley, do you covenant to have Natalie to be your wife, to live together according to God's ordinance of marriage, do you promise to love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep yourself only for her, so long as you both shall live? Natalie, do you covenant to have Wesley to be your husband, to live together according to God's ordinance of marriage? Do you promise to love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep yourself only for him as long as you both shall live? Wesley, you may now kiss the bride.
1 Corinthians chapter 13 is often read at weddings. It's the so-called love chapter. But the context of the passage is, is not about romantic love. It's about Christian love, about love within the church, about believers' love for one another. This does not make it any less applicable within a marriage, though. In fact, maybe it stresses the importance of uh, Christian love even more so. And so Wes and Natalie, this is, this is what Christian love is as described in the Bible. And this ought to be true of you, whether you feel romantic or not. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 says this, If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all that I have and deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It's not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. We know in part and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, I gave up childish ways. But we now see in part, in a, in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now in part, then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. So now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, but the greatest of these is love.